and we are recording. I have it set to auto record as soon as it broadcasts, so. Welcome, we've got folks joining us. We will be um, getting started with our fall gardening presentation in just a moment. I wanna go ahead and give everybody a chance to log into the webinar. Please go ahead and if you have questions during the presentation today, utilize the Q&A box. We have disabled chat for this presentation. We will be recording today. We are recording currently and the video um, should come to you in an email automatically as a registered attendee. If you don't receive an email with a link to the recording, go ahead and reach out to us and let us know. Um, we will be posting the video on our YouTube channel so that you can watch it later as well. We'll get started in just a minute or two. I'll wait just about one more minute and then we'll go ahead and get started. Again, um, go ahead and utilize the Q&A box if you have any questions today and we are recording and you should receive an automatic um, email with a link to the recording when it becomes available. If you don't, um, either reach out to us or check our YouTube channel where we will be uploading it um, as soon as possible. <laughs> Okay, well it's 102. So we've had a we've had a couple other folks um, join us after the initial rush there to get in the gate, um, but we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Alyssa Vinson, and I am the residential horticulture agent at the Manatee County Extension Office. We're located in Palmetto, Florida. I recognize um, a few of the names in the participant list. So for those of you that have heard this before, or you're already familiar with Extension, you know, just kind of grin and bear it. Um, I just want to give an overview of, uh, to everybody who's joining us for the first time, or maybe it's been a while since you've been to one of our classes, um, and remind you of, of who we are. Um, we are the University of Florida's IFAS Extension, Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences, and we are a function of the land-grant university system. Our mission as Extension is to take the research that's conducted at the university and at other educational institutions throughout the world and distill it and, and bring it back to our communities in a way that is applicable and, and relevant to your daily lives. And so our, our main goal is to provide information to you in an engaging way that allows you to make better decisions and enhance your quality of life. So that's our goal. That's what we do at Extension. We have a broad range of topics that we cover. Um, you know, here today, you're gonna to be hearing from our Master Gardener volunteers who are part of our horticulture program, but we also have folks um, that deal with commercial fisheries issues. We have the commerce, commercial horticulture um, industry that we address, landscape companies, uh, livestock specific um, individuals in our office. We have folks that work with the food and nutrition program in Title I schools. Um, we have a, uh, the 4-H program, which teaches over 18,000 youth in our community. So we really do um, have a broad range of topics in our office. And I just want to highlight some of the impacts that we've had in Manatee County in 2019. We had over $2 million of value in new licenses and CEUs for pesticide license holders over $860,000 of value in our volunteer time. And that is, um, you know, our master gardener volunteers 
donate over 10,000 hours of their time every year to educating our community members on, on good, sound horticultural knowledge. Um, so that's a big um, portion of that $860,000 value. Over 28,000 youth were educated through 4-H youth development and other youth programs that are um, kind of led or managed through our office. And over 14 million gallons of water was saved to Manatee County Utilities customers. So we really span, like I said, a wide variety of topics and I am excited to introduce to you today Maureen uh, who will be talking to you about um, planning your your fall vegetable garden and, and getting yourself up and running and ready for the the season that we have here in Florida so Maureen if you want to go ahead and share your screen we'll get that set up perfect all right go ahead and take it away Maureen There we go. Hello, everybody. As um, Alyssa has said, I am uh, Maureen Hurtler, a Master Gardener Volunteer in Manatee County. And uh, today I'd like to uh, help you get your fall vegetable garden started. As soon as I figure out why my computer isn't doing, there we go. So why grow your own vegetables? Uh, vegetable gardening offers fresh air, sunshine, and exercise, and it also offers enjoyment, mental therapy, nutritious fresh vegetables, and economic savings. I'm sorry, I need to get used to this part a little bit. Uh, my objectives for this talk is to help you keep the first three benefits of being wonderful outdoors and to avoid frustration and obtain the final four benefits. After all, I'd like you to have uh, a garden that produces uh, vegetables like on the left and not one that looks um, like the right after a few weeks. One of the themes of this uh, presentation is going to be about the differences between Florida and other places. Uh, vegetable gardening in Florida can be frustrating. We have uh, distinctly different, uh, we have a distinctly different area uh, than in the North and the Midwest where people may be used to gardening. We have dry and wet seasons, and you can see this on the graph that shows um, in a month like April, we may have less than two inches of rain. Um, and as we all have experienced, uh, June, July, and August, um, you, we can have almost seven and a half inches of rain. Our weather here is usually warm, often hot, but there's still the possibility of some short freezes in the winter. And uh, we are not the only people who enjoy living in Florida, or the only things. We have diseases and pests that also enjoy um, our climate and conditions. This is one of my favorite books about gardening. It's called The $64 Tomato. The uh, cover blurb says, how one man nearly lost his sanity, spent a fortune, and endured an existential crisis in the quest for the perfect garden. Also on the cover, it says, gardening as an extreme sport. Um, I would like very much for you not to have this experience uh, while gardening in Florida. I'm gonna ask a question just uh, briefly to get an idea of our audience. Um, and uh, we'd like you to tell us um, where you're originally from. Uh, Florida, the Northeast, the West, the Midwest, or somewhere else, in, somewhere else entirely different. Alyssa, could you start the poll? Give it a couple more seconds. Now, 
So this is about um, the results that um, I expected, uh, which is that a large proportion of uh, people who are taking this class at least um, are from the Northeast United States. I myself am from Pennsylvania and from the Midwest. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, gardening is very, very different from these two areas. Uh, one of my recurrent themes is going to be things are different in Florida. Our land is flat. Uh, we have palm trees, especially the cabbage palm. Uh, we have the Gulf of Mexico and sandy beaches. Um, and we also have massive development, uh, particularly as we move east in Manatee County. Things are different in Florida. We have a different climate and our climate is different across the state. We have different planting seasons. Our soil composition is quite unusual. We select different crops because of our climate and planting seasons. And as mentioned, uh, we have a lot of diseases and pests. Uh, the one slide that represents to me the way it's felt for most of August. Um, and on the bottom slide, uh, we see uh, what I think is some kale uh, with on the bottom half of the leaf, a nice colony of aphids, which are a common pests that just like to suck the life out of your plants. This is an overview of our climate. Uh, in general, we're divided into three sections, the north, the central, and the south. To the right, we see the uh, USDA planting zone graph. And as you can see, uh, most of our state is um, uh, as high as 8B um, in the northern section. Uh, most of where we are is 9A and 9B, uh, but you can also see along the coast some 10B. Specifically, another graph just showing our area with Manatee County. Again, uh, mostly uh, 9B. Uh, but also some 10A. This is the actual USDA climate map, uh, which is uh, quite busy, um, but um, gives us information that I'll go more in depth uh, into in the next slide, uh, but tells us what the lowest temperatures are for each zone that plants will tolerate. And this is a uh, an average uh, figured out by reviewing uh, the period 1976 to 2005. Um, you can see in the areas that I've highlighted, highlighted 9A through 10B, uh, the plants recommended for these zones are ones that can tolerate uh, temperatures uh, as low as 25 degrees. Um, and as you move into the warmer areas, uh, the lowest temperatures some can tolerate is about 40 degrees. So even um, in 9A, through, through 9A and 9B, uh, there is a risk of frost. In general, what is zone nine? Uh, in zone nine, the minimum average temperature that our plants can tolerate is 20 degrees to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. 9A, uh, they can tolerate a little bit more coolness. And 9B, it's 25 to about 30 degrees. Again, you'll notice that um, these temperatures are all below freezing. Um, and uh, when they happen, um, it may be a good idea uh, to protect your plants. Well, we also have different planting seasons. We have the spring planting season, which is late January to mid-April. Right now we're in the fall season, uh, which is late August to March. You'll notice that there is some overlap in the months and what you're planting really depends upon their heat and cold tolerance um, and uh, avoiding the deep winter and deep summer. As I mentioned, we can have frosts in winter and in the summer we have tremendous heat, rain and pests and so the summer is probably the season where we do our least vegetable gardening. We have another poll here 
which is what is the most important factor in planning your garden? Here we go. Uh, about 43% said location, 30% uh, said soil, 3% said the health of transplants, and 25% said, said the ease of maintenance. Um, these are all important, but the most important factor here in Florida is our soil. And we'll go on to talk about that in just a minute. So, how do you choose a garden site? You want to make sure you have enough room. You need to know the number of plants you want and how far apart they have to be spaced. If you don't have enough room, you can use raised beds or grow boxes, and we'll talk about those later on. You need well-drained soil. That means no standing water, no mud after a rain, and our picture here shows you what you don't want. At the extension, we can help you do a drainage test if you have any questions about what's going on with this part of your garden. It helps to have your garden near your home and near water, although many people do use community gardens where um, water is easily accessible. For the fall season, you need a minimum of six to eight hours of direct sun every day, and um, actually a little bit more can be really helpful. Well, about location. As I said, you'd like it to be close to your home and water, um, but when you put in your garden, there also are a number of regulations that you need to be aware of. Uh, homeowners associations may have restrictions, uh, particularly about whether your garden can be seen from the road um, or uh, about gardening in your front lawn. So please check those out. Uh, you also need to understand the changes in light over the day. Is there a time when your home or trees interfere with that direct sunlight? And finally, you need to be aware of local fertilizer and watering policies. Many places have watering restrictions. Uh, that information in Manatee County will be found on their website. And there are fertilizer rules. Uh, these predominantly uh, uh, apply to uh, in-ground gardening. Uh, for example, the one from Sarasota tells us that our fertilizer needs less than 20% nitrogen, less than 2% phosphorus. You can't uh, put in fertilizer at all during the rainy season, which is July 1st to September 30th, and you have to be at least 25 feet away from any water body. For residents and businesses that apply their own fertilizer, uh, you are responsible for applying the correct formulation at the right time of the year. Uh, the Manti County Fertilizer Ordinance restricts the use of the following products on residential urban landscapes. Granular fertilizer products with less than 50% slow release nitrogen, any nitrogen or phosphorus containing products between June 1st and September 30th, and phosphorus applications without a soil test indicating a phosphorus deficiency. And I'll talk a little bit about fertilizers um, later down in the presentation. Once again, things are different in Florida. You would very much like to have soil uh, that's at the top, uh, dark, rich, textured, uh, smells wonderful. You may still find that in areas of East Manatee County that haven't been developed. Unfortunately, what most of us have is sand, which is grainy. It's very porous. There's nothing in there to hold water. And of course, it's nutritionally poor. Uh, many people have fill, 
which is what the landscape is made out of after uh, the foundations for homes and businesses have, have been, dealt, have been uh, dug. Uh, that can have rock, concrete, garbage. Uh, it certainly has an unknown water drainage. And again, it's usually nutritionally poor. For this reason, soil is the uh, most important thing in successful Florida gardening. Well, what's your first step? Uh, the very uh, first things that you should do is have your soil and your water tested. Uh, many times soil will look like the picture on the right uh, where you may have uh, chemical contamination and garbage and uh, just not really know um, what can grow there. And I thought that the uh, uh, picture in the left uh, was sort of humorous, uh, talking about not drinking reclaimed water from the toilet. And I'll let you all think about that for a little while. Well, how do you sample your soil? Um, I don't want you to dig up your entire garden and then find out that it's not satisfactory. So pick five spots in the garden. Uh, if you have an area uh, that has a particular issue, um, like uh, near the seawall, uh, you may uh, want to keep that uh, separate. Um, in general, you clean off the top layer of grass, leaves, weeds, and using a trowel, remove a shovel full of soil from at least four to six inches down. You can mix all the samples together, like I said, unless you have one that you're particularly concerned about, and make sure you remove any plant material or mulch. Uh, we don't need more than about two cups of soil uh, in a plastic baggie, and then uh, you can bring that to us at the extension office and we'll take it from there. Well, what do we do with a soil test at the extension? We test your pH and soluble salts. When you receive a report, it'll have some simple instructions about what these, what these two things mean and how to deal with them. Uh, you also get a phone call uh, from a Master Gardener volunteer uh, to help you understand the results and to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, we do charge a very small fee for this. If you're concerned about the actual nutrients in your soil, we can send your uh, soil to uh, the university. Uh, there they have a specific landscape and vegetable garden panel, uh, which as you can see, gives us a lot of information about macro and micronutrients. And they give you a specific lime requirement, which we'll talk about in just a minute. They give very specific recommendations for fertilizing. Um, and they do charge a moderate fee. Uh, and again, you can uh, discuss uh, this report with um, anyone at the extension office. So let's talk about soil pH. pH can be acidic or alkaline. Neutral pH is seven. Florida sand is mostly 6.1 or mildly acidic. Urban soils fill usually 7.5 or mildly alkaline. Your pH affects your plant selection. Vegetables, for example, like a mildly acidic pH. Uh, the avail availability of nutrients is affected by your pH. And also the pH um, is involved with how you choose your amendments. This is a wonderful slide about how pH affects the ability of your plants to take up nutrients. You can see around seven, almost all of our macro and micronutrients are available. Some uh, micronutrients get more available um, as you become more acidic, but you still maintain uh, a good amount of the others listed here. And really the main problem gets uh, when you start to be too, al too alkaline. So we also test soluble salts. Uh, water here tends to have high salinity in various places. This gives you, again, abnormal nutrient levels very stunted growth and wilting. Uh, salinity is very difficult to remedy and often you're better off just choosing a better place to garden. Well, how do we adjust the pH? If you have very acidic soil, we use 
calcium carbonate, which is lime, or dolomite, which includes some magnesium. Uh, the lime requirement uh, that we give you is the number of pounds uh, per square foot. Um, and that needs to be added to the soil before, of course, you do any planting. For alkaline soil, you can add sulfur or compost, but both of these remedies are quite temporary. Next, we need to test your water. There are a number of water sources in Manatee County. County water is fit for drinking. Rainwater is usually pure, but it depends upon the salt spray and collected debris. Reclaimed water is often very salty uh, and very uh, poor in nutrients. And well water, uh, again, can have salt intrusion and also a number of minerals. We like the pH to be as close to, norm to neutral as possible. And we like your soluble salts to be as low as possible. Next up is planting your garden. This is more fun than we're going to have in a minute. You want to choose vegetables that your family like and that grow well in Florida. There are planting guides available um, in the Florida Vegetable Gardening Guide and the uh, address is here or you can simply go to Edith's and search Florida Vegetable Gardening Guide. You want to draw your garden layout, include the names, location, and planting date, and make a list of all the supplies that you're going to need. Now comes the hard work. Uh, in order to prepare your garden, uh, the first thing you have to do is remove all of the uh, top covering of weeds, grass, uh, stone, whatever. Then you have to till your soil. You have to uh, often hand rake to break up clods. And you may even have to screen uh, and sift your dirt. Um, I grew up in northeastern Pennsylvania in the anthracite mine uh, area, and our yard was built over the dump. Um, and I can remember standing as a young girl with my grandfather, uh, sifting all of our garden and getting bottles and china and all kinds of things. But when you're done, you want your soil and your garden plot to look like the bottom right. Some of the specifics, start early. Uh, you want to till and remove all of the weeds and debris at least three weeks before planting to allow any other weeds that are uh, present to sprout. Um, you want to add organic or composted matter, any of the amendments uh, such as lime, and then till everything again and smooth it out. Amending the soil. Everything benefits from organic compost material. Uh, at the extension, you can learn all about home composting, including the sources of compost and the ratio of brown to green matter, care of your compost, including turning and sometimes watering, and the use of compost. This year, out of a bin this size, my husband and I uh, removed 15 gallons of compost. Some people ask about the difference between organic fertilizers and compost. How do they differ? They don't really differ. An organic fertilizer will have an exact uh, description of the amount of various nutrients. And of course, compost, you don't really know the exact amount. But both of them feed the soil. Uh, the organic, mer uh, organic matter is broken down to soil nutrients, which microorganisms process into plant nutrients. So there's a longer term benefit. Uh, fertilizers just feed the plant. Synthetic fertilizers contain the macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. You like one that has micronutrients, and some of them are listed here. Uh, what you choose depends upon your soil type, the pH, and if there's been any previous treatment with fertilizer. Be sure to get a specific vegetable fertilizer. Uh, a ratio of 10-10-10, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, is a good place to begin. Uh, you do an, addition, an initial uh, uh, application, and then you may do side dressing, which is putting some more on later in the process. Whatever you do, follow the directions. With the fertilizer recommendations, if you're doing in-ground uh, gardening, you may want to look for the middle number, the phosphorus, to be as low as possible. If you don't have room, you can use raised beds. You want to clean the area and lay down a weed barrier. Newspaper is great. There are purchase barriers. 
You don't want to use plain plastic because that tends to make things too hot and too damp. When you build your frame, you want to use untreated or aged wood. Uh, pressed wood um, has uh, some chemicals in it that may affect your plants. Uh, you want to purchase uh, at a reliable store uh, soil that is specific, again, for vegetable gardens. You don't want to use topsoil. You don't want a potting mix that has moisture retaining granules. And of course, then you will amend as needed. This is what beautiful raised beds look like. Um, you can see the excellent spacing and support for these plants. Uh, it's easiest to plant your garden in rows. You'd like everything to run north south so you get the most sun during the day. Uh, you want enough space where you can work. You can measure your rows with stakes, strings, and a yardstick, depending upon how compulsive you are. And make sure you use labels. You can also divide your garden into square feet and then plant within each one. And don't forget uh, fencing and supports. Um, I use self-watering grow boxes, and this is what they look like with some Swiss chard. Uh, we have examples at use in our demonstration gardens. Uh, there's a video on our YouTube channel, which is UF IFAS Extension Manatee County. And we have instructions available at our Manatee, Manatee County Extension about making your own. You only need these three things and some tools. And this is what a finished box looks like. And yes, I did plant my peppers too close together. Um, and this is what my basil uh, looks like. So I find these really handy. Choosing crops, this can be important. The easiest way is to follow us on Facebook at the uh, Florida Master Gardener Program uh, or at the website, Gardening Solutions. Every month you'll see a feature that says edibles to plant for each uh, area, North, Central, South, and it also gives you some specific uh, planting advice. Our cool season vegetables uh, are your root vegetables and your greens, basically. But strawberries are in there too, which is a nice thing to remember. Warm season vegetables uh, tend to be tomatoes and peppers, uh, eggplant. Um, okra will go through the summer most, most of the time. Uh, squash and pumpkins. Um, I put up some eggplant here because I planted three eggplant plants last year and ended up uh, learning a lot of new recipes for eggplant. So I had great success with that. Um, and okra, again, at the bottom, which will take you uh, most of the way through the uh, hot season. Um, obtaining plants. Uh, most people use transplants. Uh, when you select a plant, you want, again, a reliable source, sturdy stems, leaves without wilt or brown edges, and you don't want them in flower or fruit, although it's tempting. Uh, but those uh, plants have already used a lot of their energy into making that flower and fruit, and so they may not really do well in the future. And you want to make sure they're without pests. You can see how the transplants are kept at your local garden center, and they're very close together, which means uh, pests can really spread. So you want to examine the leaves, underside of the leaves, and the little V areas where the stems, uh, uh, where the leaves join the stem for any sticky substance, uh, white masses, uh, uh, or any, any, anything else that simply looks unhealthy. Uh, sometimes it helps to even use a magnifying glass. Uh, how do you obtain seeds? Uh, there are different varieties for all different vegetables. Um, you can also pick ones that are disease resistant. Uh, there are special varieties bred specifically for our region. Um, you know then a lot about the cultural practice of raising from seed because you've done it, and you can select your most, most healthy plants uh, for transplant. Uh, this is a sample of a bean seed that tells us um, that it is rust resistant, which is a fungal disease of vegetables. Seed sources, again, they need to be reliable. Uh, the varieties you want may not be available at common seed companies or local stores. There are specialty retailers. Um, you might participate in a seed bank where people save their own seeds and trade or sell them. Or uh, again, at the extension, we can show you how to save your own vegetable seeds. This is just an example of one of the resources uh, that's available for you. Uh, this is a section on grape tomatoes. 
and you can see it lists the variety name jolly girl and sweethearts are kind of nice it tells you where you can purchase uh, where you can purchase the seeds when they make their fruit and it gives you some nice descriptions to help you choose uh, what kind of uh, grape tomato you want uh, the next uh, column is letters that refer to disease resistance, fungus and virus and so forth. And again, um, at the EDIS site, you can find out exactly what those mean. And then finally, there's some specific pieces of information, such as uh, good fruit setting under high temperatures, which may uh, enhance your gardening experience. How do you start seeds? Uh, seed starting trays with plastic covers are available. If you want to use another container, they should be well scrubbed and then sterilized by soaking in dilute bleach uh, for a while and rinsing them very well before planting. You can use plastic bottles, soda bottles, cut them in half, use the bottom for planting and the tops to make a humidity chamber. Make sure you read the instructions on the seed packet. Many seeds only go under a quarter inch of soil, which is basically a sprinkling. You want to use sterile germinating soil. You water very gently because the seeds really don't need wa much water to, uh, to germinate, but they do need uh, humidity, which is an easy way to take care of that. And finally, don't forget to label everything. I never remember, and my garden is always sort of a potluck about what comes up. You do your germination in a warm, shady area and then gradually move the transplants once they have at least four true leaves into larger pots and then gradually to where they're going to be finally planted. Some seeds like zucchini can be sown directly into the ground and the seed packet will give you that information. The seed packet also gives you information about spacing and then thinning the plants because you'll probably want to put in a few more seeds uh, than uh, you uh, want plants. Uh, if you get some extra seeds that uh, germinate into nice plants, you can thin them and be very popular with your friends. This is the system that I use for seed starting. It's uh, retail, has a water tray at the bottom with a riser in it, and over that riser goes a wicking mat that dips into the bottom. And on top of that goes your uh, cells filled with the germinating soil and your seeds, and the humidity cover goes on top. This is an example of using soda bottles. Um, you can, as I said, use the bottoms instead of the clay pots. Um, if you do use, again, clay pots, make sure that they're clean and sterile. This is what germination looks like. These all you'll notice have uh, simply two leaves, which are the germinating leaves, and you want them to grow uh, at least another two to four. Uh, this is what seedlings look like. You see some in a seed starting tray uh, to your right, and you see uh, mine uh, about three weeks ago, um, which uh, most of whom seem to be doing pretty well, and um, I had great success this year. Your uh, seed, your transplant is ready to plant when it's about six inches high. And more importantly, it has developed a root system so that when you take it out of your seed starting chamber, it really holds together quite nicely. And you don't have to break up this root ball um, because the roots at this time are usually pretty fine. Well, we have wonderful IFS resources uh, for vegetable gardening. Uh, this book is available for sale in the uh, IFS bookstore. And I really strongly recommend this if you want to have a good gardening experience. Also, we have a Florida Vegetable Gardening Guide uh, that you can find through EDIS. And you can also find some specific uh, publications about uh, individual vegetable crops. Um, as I said, we have a lot of resources. Um, I'm sure you're not going to uh, be able uh, to copy all these down. Uh, but again, you can go to EDIS and simply put in the name of what you want, um, and it'll take you there. Uh, again, you can use Gardening Solutions um, at IFES, and that has, um, uh, again, uh, very, very useful 
uh, information. Uh, you can also find out there about what the various disease resistant letters need. And again, as, uh, as I said earlier, you can find some recommended varieties. For tomato enthusiasts, there is also an EDIS publication that gives a very in-depth explanation of disease resistance and discusses the varieties especially suited for reducing common problems here in Florida. Uh, we can also help you buy seeds. Uh, there is a publication uh, that gives some examples of uh, reliable uh, seed companies. And we saw a part of that for the grape tomatoes. Um, another way to obtain seeds is by seed saving and sharing through seed banks. Uh, we have some information, of course, on how to do that as well. Uh, some other publications, we have a lot of them. Uh, they basically can be found at the EDIS site. Um, if you uh, want to go to that. But again, um, if you put EDIS in what you want in Google, it works very well. There are some other uh, things that uh, are available to you. There's Solutions for Your Life, uh, which is, uh, again, found through IFS, UFL. And of course, we at the Extension are always happy to help you with any of these questions. We can uh, locate publications for you. Um, there are many experienced master gardeners that can help you uh, with uh, your questions about planting your, your garden. And of course, we love to hear from people. The ways to contact us. Uh, we have um, some limited um, activity right now because of uh, the COVID virus. Um, and we are gradually starting to increase uh, our availability. Uh, but you can come to see us at the Manatee County Agriculture and Extension Service. Uh, please uh, call ahead to see when we're available. You can ask us questions at our website uh, for Manatee County. Um, and probably right now, the best way to do things is to, manatee, is to uh, contact manateemg at gmail.com. Uh, if you have uh, specific uh, questions that would involve something that you could take a picture of, um, that can be really helpful to us. For our future presentations, uh, we have uh, Mac Lessig uh, talking on September 16th about the more fun parts of gardening, uh, about the timing of planting, the spacing, placement of vegetable plants in the garden, as well as specific fertilizing, mulching, watering, and other maintenance tasks. You've noticed I haven't put weeding down there, but that's in there too. And uh, on September 23rd, uh, Kathy Oliver from the Extension will be discussing about scouting for pests and diseases. And I imagine this will also include uh, some integrated pest management for helping you control these proce this process. We have these beautiful demonstration uh, gardens um, at uh, our educational gardens, uh, along with um, the self-watering uh, do-it-yourself uh, planting boxes. Um, and this is a great place to come and see uh, what vegetables we've planted and how well they're doing. Um, and in addition, uh, we help out at some community gardens. Uh, so you may also be able to go there to see things in action. Well, it's time for questions. Um, as uh, Alyssa mentioned, you can put them in the uh, Q&A uh, boxes and one of us will be available to um, answer them for you. Um, and so I'm gonna turn over the screen to the panelists. There we are. All right, thank you, Maureen. You're welcome. Let's see, so we have one question. We have one question in here um, about um, the sun, dealing with when the sun gets intense their veggies and herbs start to wither. So how to combat that? Um, and why is it so hard to grow basil? <laughs> um, uh, let's see. So 
you know, first inclination would be if the sun is getting too intense for your vegetables, you may consider um, where you've placed them. Uh, you might want to consider moving them if possible. Um, you could set up some type of a shade cloth if the sun is getting too intense. You don't want to overwater them to compensate for that. Um, and with basil, I would suggest checking out some, some varieties that are not just your kind of typical sweet basil, but um, things like African blue basil. Um, some of the other varieties can handle some of our heat uh, a little bit better. Um, as far as, let's see, there's a couple questions about signing up for the upcoming webinars. Those do have individual links, so you do need to uh, register for those individually. Um, the link that you use today won't work. Um, if you're looking for information on what vegetables and herbs to start now, there's a really great infographic that's available online. If you search UF IFAS, um, fall vegetable gardening, you'll see, um, you'll probably uh, get a nice infographic that tells you what things you can plant now, what things transplant well now, and what things you can get started in seed now. Um, let's see. Maureen, do you have anything to add? Let's see, when should I start to plant a fall garden specifically? So when should people start planting their fall garden, Maureen? I started uh, my seeds uh, probably the second week of August. I grow everything from seeds. And uh, the past uh, weekend, uh, we uh, added the amendments to um, our grow boxes. And yesterday I put all my plants in the grow boxes. Uh, the weather has uh, turned just a little bit with some cooler nights. Um, and uh, I found most of, if, you, if my transplants are healthy and at a decent size, that they uh, grow very well. Uh, the thing to remember is that um, most vegetables will uh, set fruit uh, somewhere between 60 and 90 days, and you'll find that on the seed packet. So if you start now, you'll have all your vegetables uh, before we even move into the chances for frost. Uh, so it may be a little bit early, uh, earlier than you think, but toward, for the end result, it's much better. Um, and the th same thing works for your spring garden. You're actually gonna put the plants in a little bit earlier than you think because you want them to be finished by April. As far as basil goes, um, I uh, direct sow my basil into the grow boxes um, and um, I have pretty good results, uh, particularly this time of the year. I like to make pesto, so uh, there are a couple different varieties and a couple different grow boxes, um, but particularly as it gets warmer, all the herbs, uh, particularly cilantro is one, um, just don't do as well. So this is the time to start your herbs too. All right. Um, yeah, question about rosemary. Rosemary, um, you have to be careful with it getting too much water because it's a plant that, that kind of prefers an arid environment. So if you can you can do well with rosemary here, but just make sure that it doesn't um, get over watered or it's not in a space where water kind of tends to, to be held in your yard. Um, bush beans do really well here. Um, yeah, bush beans do really well. Um, if you're looking for specific varieties, again, uh, check out the um, Florida IFAS Vegetable Gardening Guide. It has recommendations for specific varieties for all of those. It has bush beans, it has climbing beans. Um, and you can also look at some, there are some really interesting kind of alternative crop ideas. I've grown things like winged beans and long beans that are, um, you know, Asian bean varieties that are really interesting and do really well here. Even, um, um, even later into the into the season sometimes when it gets kind of hot. I think that Mac will go more into some information on maintaining seeds. Um, so we have a question about with the amount of rainwater, what do you have to do to save seeds and young plants? So, you know, if, we, if you get a deluge, um, are you going to get your seeds washed away? Are young plants going to get... Um, smacked down and and that that's you know a possibility but again if you have a good container system set up your seeds should 
be fairly safe. Um, and with transplants, you can keep them kind of up and, and away from, from where the worst of the rainwater is going to be so that they don't get um, too damaged. And then this is a big question I get many times. Maybe Kathy or Maureen, you have a suggestion here. Is there any lavender that we can grow here? <laughs> uh, the, the bottom line is probably not. When you think about those gorgeous lavender fields, uh, uh, they're all at pretty northern climates, uh, like Mackinac Island in uh, Michigan, almost up at the UP. Uh, the, the only way that I found to do it is to get some healthy transplants um, and keep them on the lanai, you know, or something in a small container more for scent and enjoyment. Um, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to add in about rosemary is that that does not grow well from seeds. So that's another thing where you want to buy transplants. But lavender is one of those things like asparagus and there are just some things that um, will give you uh, an emotional crisis if you try and grow them outdoors in the soil. Um, so we had a question about nematodes. What do you do? And um, nematodes are very uh, common in our soil here in Florida. Um, and there are no, there are really no effective kind of chemical options for nematodes. There is some good, um, you can get some good results by solarizing your soil. So, um, you know, we're kind of at the end of your opportunity to do that for this year, but solarizing your soil using like a three mil clear plastic, um, sealing it around the edges to make sure that your soil um, reaches a high enough temperature to kill the nematodes that are, that are present. Um, that's something that you'll, you'll have to continually do though, because the nematodes are present all around. And so they'll move around and, and get into the spot that you've solarized. You can also go up with your planting. So rather than planting in the ground or putting your pots directly on the ground, you can um, stack them up on, on bricks um, and that can help with that as well. There are some um, methods for interplanting with um, some different types of cover crops and marigolds that have had some limited success um, in, in field trials, but really the kind of the best option is going to be to solarize your soil um, and, and do that, you know, every summer. And then uh, last question here is on um, disease resistant, low maintenance veggies or herbs. So if, if you're like, if you really want something that's gonna be really easy, you're not gonna have a lot of trouble with it. What do you think would be the easiest vegetable for, an, for maybe a newbie to grow? <laughs> what do you think, uh, Jane or Kathy, either one? The, uh the words um, low maintenance don't really come to mind uh, for me for vegetable gardening. Um, it is not like the Midwest. Um, so you are going to have to put some more effort into it. Um, in many ways, uh, for me, it's been trial and error. Um, I have not been able to grow squash. Uh, I just have terrible trouble with uh, uh, moldy, uh, moldy fungus and thrips and uh, I just haven't had any luck with it. Um, on the other hand, you know, I can grow tomatoes. Uh, as I said, I found the eggplant um, to be very easy and resistant, um, but it does require a lot of water uh, when it's a mature plant. Uh, greens this time of year um, are pretty low maintenance, especially if you harvest them as microgreens. Uh, kale, I, I don't think you can kill kale anywhere. Uh, and uh, so uh, those are some of the vegetables that I think are more disease resistant. But again, uh, you know, low maintenance is not, uh, not the word that I would use if you're, certainly if you're doing an in-ground garden, uh, grow boxes and patio planting uh, that protects them from some environmental and disease issues can be a little bit more, more um, uh, less maintenance. Uh, but again, uh, Florida is different, and that's one of the things we have to accept. And kind of a fail-safe herb would be something like garlic chives or chives. 
or parsley, which will last for two years and really can take a range of conditions. So, and it also kind of depends on what you like to cook with, what, what veggies and herbs you like and, and finding the right one for your situation. Yep, I agree. All right, not seeing. Okay, we had a couple other questions. Um, let's see. Cilantro seems to be a caterpillar food. I don't, I would have to see maybe some, um, I've never had my cilantro really chowed on by caterpillars. I'm not sure what would, I know parsley and fennel will, uh, you know, those are specifically um, an issue for some butterfly larva, but um, never had a problem with cilantro. Uh, I'm not sure what those would be. Uh, could be some other type of, you know, just kind of caterpillar um, pest. If we get a picture of it though, if you send a picture to manatee.mg at gmail.com, we can look it up for you. Um, and then I think this will be our last question before we end. Um, issue with pollination, growing veggies and herbs on a closed lanai. Um, you know, probably if you're trying to grow something like cucumbers and squash and, you know, if you're trying to grow something that um, really specifically needs uh, insect pollination, then, you know, if you have it in a screened in lanai, then yes, that might be an issue. But if you just kind of walk by and brush it with your hands here and there, um, you're probably okay. You may need to take it outside the screened in porch um, occasionally and, and bring it back in um, if, you, if you continue to have issues with fruiting though. Um, and then yes, you will be able to watch this again. It has been recorded. All right. And with that, I don't see any more open questions. So thank you, Maureen, again, you did a great job. And thank you, Kathy, for being the wizard in the background, making things run. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day.